damning new reports has found that children seeking gender care on the NHS have been let down by a lack of research and evidence. The report, led by retired paediatrician Dr Hilary Cass, has found no good evidence for giving puberty blockers to adolescents, and it warned that toxicity surrounding the trans debate has influenced doctors and their decisions. The report also claimed that mental health conditions could be confused for gender-related distress, and Dr Cass found that there is remarkably weak evidence for many of the gender treatments currently provided. Uh, well, NHS England has said it is reviewing the report's findings and has instructed clinics to pause first-time appointments for under-18s. Well, joining us to discuss this is NHS GP Dr Louise Irvin and Kate Barker, who's the CEO of LGB Alliance. I'm going to start with you, Dr Irvin, considering this was a report commissioned by the NHS and the results of that report really has been saying that everything that's been going on thus far probably shouldn't have been happening. What's your response to all of that? Yeah, pretty much agree, I think. The um, whistleblowers have been vindicated. There have been... Lots of uh, clinicians who have been raising concerns about the gender treatment of youth, uh, children and adolescents for, for many years. And it's um, sad, but satisfying, I suppose, that this has finally come out. And what we've been saying all along is that there's no good evidence for either puberty blockers or cross-sex hormones, that's estrogen and, and testosterone, in uh, children and young people, adolescents. Hilary Cass was uh, commissioned to review services up to 18 years old. I think her, her report is fantastic. I've, it's very long. It's very, very well researched. And everything she says, she, she's backing up very well. And we I think this is going to turn a, new, a, a whole new chapter, a, a complete change. What we want to see is that the care for gender distressed children and young people should not be exceptionalised and not be treated differently from other forms of distress. These uh, you know, pe people would normally expect holistic, evidence-based care. For some reason, this group of children and young people were put on, I, I wouldn't even say experimental treatments, because a proper experiment ha is conducted properly, you know, um, with control groups and under proper protocol. This was just sort of reckless, reckless treatments uh, with with life-changing, irreversible Im impact uh, with no evidence base and ears closed to criticisms and concerns for a very long time. Absolutely. It makes you wonder why qualified medical professionals went along with this. It's extraordinary. Uh, let's go over to you now, Kate Barker. You're the CEO of the LGB Alliance. I noticed there's no T there. Uh, but uh, what is your take on this? I mean, I think the first thing we have to say is, you know, gender dysphoria is a genuine condition. Some kids genuinely suffer from it and do need help. I would suggest, I don't know what you think, Kate, that uh, gender dysphoria has been woefully overdiagnosed over the past 50, 10 or 15 years and that the uh, Tavistock Clinic in particular, known to locals who live around that area, me being one of them as Frankenstein's castle, uh, went out of its way to find as many kids as it could uh, that it could diagnose as gender dysphoric and then frankly prescribe for them uh, uh, drugs and treatments that mutilated them. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I very much agree. I mean, I, I would start by agreeing that it's a really impressive piece of work. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, that Hillary Cass has looked, looked so hard for evidence really th throws into kind of a stark relief how chaotic and uh, muddled um, and ideologically driven the service was. I mean, you were saying a second ago that somehow we've ended up here. But I don't think it's a somehow. I think it's it's been a deliberate, ideologically driven programme. And one of the things that the report picked out that was particularly interesting to us, and it's something we've been saying for years, is that the vast majority of children who end up at JIDS are same-sex attracted. And not when I say majority, I don't mean by a small amount. 89% of the girls and 81% of the boys. Now, Kemi Badenoch recently used the phrase transing away the, the gay. Um, and staff at the Tavistock used to joke that you know there are going to be no more gay kids left anymore, because what's happened is 
gender nonconformity has been turned into a condition to be medicated um, by people who don't have children's best interests at heart. And I was very shocked to read in the report that the adult gender services staff would not cooperate with Dr. Cass in forming an evidence base. And the, to my mind, the only people that don't want to see evidence are those who know that the evidence will show that they're ideologues and charlatans. So I don't think it's coincidental. I think there's more to it than they're a bit muddled and they, for, they didn't do the filing very well and they didn't keep records. I think it's much more about a lot of people who want to see um, gender ideology embedded in our society and, and the people that suffer are the children. They're the victims. And it, it's you know, astonishing that so many of these kids are self-identifying as being same-sex attracted. And we should be asking, what is it that's making kids who used to be happy to be gay mm. think, no, there's fundamentally something wrong with me. If I'm gender non-conforming, if I'm a, a girl and I like football, that's an indication, therefore, that I really should be a boy. I think yeah. it's absolutely wicked. It's a wicked ideology that tells little children that their bodies are somehow fundamentally broken. When yeah. left alone, most of them would just grow up to be happily lesbian, gay or bisexual. So I think there's a danger of um, not looking for responsibility here by saying, oh, well, this is awful that this has happened. and we, We're not sure how this has happened, but now we're going to fix it. I think there's a bit more to it. We really need to root out why this has happened, how this was allowed to happen for so long. I mean, we know, for example, that some LGBTQ plus lobby groups and very influential charities were able to have a direct line to the Tavistock. These were people that had no clinical training at all, were able to have a direct line to the Tavistock yeah. and ask that they, um, you know, treated treated children with so-called gender-affirming yeah, care. There was some it's a real, the whole thing is a, real, yeah. is a, is yeah. a huge shock. It is. I, I believe. On, on, this, on this, I want to bring Louise back in because something that really stuck out for me in talking about the phenomena and what the inception of this phenomena was, where all of a sudden changing your gender was not just something that could be normalised, it was actively promoted, frankly, whether it be by big business, whether it be by people online, the algorithms of Instagram and TikTok, whether it be by TV programmes sticking transgender kids in every single thing that's been broadcast, it's been actively promoted, I would say. And it seems to me something very interesting in all of this is once upon a time where gender dysphoria was largely a male-dominated condition throughout history, 75% of those presenting at such clinics as the Tavistock Clinic have been young girls. And there has been suggestions as well that this highly pornified society we live in, where little girls either got to be as perfect and uh, objectified as a Kardashian, or has that sort of uh, unwanted constant sexualization from a very young age that it's been preferable to them to want to hide behind changing their gender. I want to play a little bit of a clip on this particular topic from Dr. Cass first and then ask your opinion on it, Louise. The first thing to appreciate is this is a very different population of young people from the young people who were presenting to gender services um, some 10 years ago. So the original cohort of young people was really predominantly children and predominantly birth registered boys and now the predominant group is birth registered girls presenting in early teens. Now, Louise, I know, I, I think I understand that biologically women have a higher predisposition, predisposition, say, to sort of more community hysteria and things like that. But what do you think is going on here? Why is it largely little girls who have been saying, I don't want to be a girl anymore? Well, I think this is a question that began to be asked five years ago, and there was supposed to be research into it. In 2019, the NHS England said it was going to be doing it, and they haven't done it. There's been an incredible lack of curiosity and concern about this 4,000% increase in referrals of teenage girls to gender clinics. At, that's 40 times the rate beforehand. It seemed to all suddenly accelerate in 2014, um, lots of theories about the reasons, um, very powerful ones, I think, uh, are those of social contagion. But also, um, we know there's also a rise in mental health problems in teenagers, especially teenage girls. Again, there's not enough knowledge about that. But we, we do know that teenage girls will, are more likely to um, sort of channel their, their distress or their anxiety or, or their issues into 
a, a, maybe a, a simple explanation. So it could be, um, and, and, and we see that people um, thinking it's it's to do with my body in some way. It's the body that's at fault. So that could manifest itself as anorexia. It could manifest itself as self-harming and cutting. And now it's manifesting itself. I must, there's something wrong with my body. And, and instead of just saying, to, and, and the research shows that many, the majority of these young girls have multiple issues. Many of them are neurodiverse. I think over a, thir a third have autism. Great many have um, uh, other mental health issues like depression and anxiety. Many have had adverse childhood experiences and sometimes PTSD and sometimes have, have been um, sexually abused. And there's a very high percentage of uh, of the referrals have come from uh, children in care. So these are people with complex, young women with complex issues. And instead of services addressing these and helping them, they've been all too willing to say, all right, you think you might, there's something wrong with your body. We think there's something wrong with your body too. And we're going to put you into a, a pathway, which is going to create um, irreversible change, remove your fertility, <laughs> Uh, cause long term, we don't even know what the long term effects are, possibly affect cognitive function and brain development, certainly affect sexual function. And that is, to me, absolutely shocking and scandalous. As a GP, I do see a lot of young people and young women with mental health issues and children as well. And the problem is that our mental health services for children, young people, which is called CAMS, Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services, are really under under-resourced, understaffed, underfunded, and it's sometimes a one year or even a two year wait to be seen there. So I would say in a big sense, why don't we care enough about our young people and their mental health to pr provide decent services for them to help and support them holistically, which is what Hilary Cass has said. And secondly, why were some clinicians only too willing to collude with this idea that yes, there's something wrong with your body and we need to change it? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Uh, can we bring uh, Kate back in? Uh, it is clearly wrong uh, to prescribe kids life-changing drugs uh, into which there's been very little research. Uh, Dr Cass talked about, you know, a, a, a distinct lack of evidence uh, about what effect these drugs will have in the long term. That's clearly wrong uh, and has to be stopped. Uh, but what I think uh, kids have to be told uh, is that there's nothing wrong with being gay. Uh, because that's what's been going on at the Tavistock. Uh, sometimes it was parents who were frankly homophobic who would rather have uh, a, a, a girl, a boy who was gay, uh, shall we say, turned into a girl. They'd rather have a girl uh, than a gay boy. So I would suggest, Kate, that what we need to do going forward is to educate kids to say there's nothing wrong with being gay, uh, but there is a lot wrong with being prescribed drugs that will change your life and probably ruin it. Absolutely, and, th and that's what we try to do. Um, and we speak to lo lots of young people. Um, uh, and I do think on that point as well about drugs and it being wrong to prescribe drugs like hormone blockers and cross-sex hormones. Um, one of the things in the CAS review, which we've been campaigning on for a while, is to block private and online clinics Good from idea. selling these drugs. Because people talk about long waiting lists on the NHS, but actually, lots of people are bypassing that, hopping onto their computer, ordering something online, having it posted to them. And I think if it's wrong to um, prescribe puberty blockers to young people through the NHS, we must be able to close the loophole so that it's not possible to do it from abroad as well. And it's very difficult because these organisations, effectively, they're monetizing the, the misery of these vulnerable children and they're just profiting from the desperation of the parents who, by the way, are told hugely irresponsibly by a lot of organisations that if you don't allow your child to have these drugs, they're liable to commit suicide. So That's a, just a terrible thing to say. Yeah, really? And that was debunked yeah. as well very thoroughly by Dr Cass in the review. So, so I really hope organisations will stop using that that kind of manipulation. In our, in, uh, and that's what we've seen too much of here, coercion, mm manipulation of the truth and this report goes a long way to peeling back all the layers and indeed. finding out what's true and what's not.